G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem, and today we're going to have a look at the Message Mid 262. Starting off, here's your rudder trim, showing left and right with the indicator. Then moving forward, you've got a couple of black buttons. These are the left and right engine igniters, and these are what you'll need to be using when you're going to be doing a manual startup in the 262. As for the throttles themselves, if you move it forward, we'll see the levers come up with a click. This is going to be your minimum position in flight to keep the engines running. Underneath are your fuel shut off and select the levers. And under that is your horizontal stabilizer trim. There's the power control switch. And there's your trim position indicator. And the flaps down and flaps up buttons. And looking outside, as the flap extends you can see we have the markings on it. It'll tell you how many degrees of flaps you have out. Coming back in, here's the gear down and gear up buttons, a compressed air pressure gauge, and the landing gear position indicator for the mains and the nose gear. There's an oxygen flow valve, emergency flap extension, emergency landing gear extension, oxygen flow indicator, and the oxygen pressure gauge. Here's your nose wheel brake and the clock. Over to this main panel, We've got an airspeed indicator which will show you true airspeed above 400 km an hour, an artificial horizon, vertical speed indicator, altimeter, repeater compass, and the AFN2 homing indicator. Underneath that, you've got your ammunition counters. And coming up here to the REVI, if you press right alt F, that'll stow the gun sight away, and this is what you should do for takeoff and landing. Over on the right of the engine instruments, these are dual scale tachometers. So the inner scale goes up to 3000 RPM and the outer scale will go up to 14000. And you'll plan on using the inner scale during the startup. These are your exhaust gas temperature gauges. You want to monitor these when you're moving the throttle to make sure you don't cause engine flame outs or fires. There's exhaust gas differential pressure, oil pressure, fuel injection pressure and your fuel gauges for the rear and front tanks along with some low fuel warning lights and there's your cabin heating over on the right is the electrical panel so up top there is going to be your ammeter there's a bunch of electrical switches there's your windshield heating switch and the flare release switch over on the right this is your emergency bomb release handle along with your radio equipment and the engine starters and tachometer scale buttons. So we're going to do the manual startup in the 262. So what's involved with this is we'll press the E key and this is going to turn on all the electrical components and then we'll start hearing the starter coming online so now we're going to go down to the tachometers here and see on the inner scale, at by a thousand RPM, I'm going to press and hold the engine igniter. And the left engine started, so it's going to be that left hand button. So we press and hold that in. And get that deep throbbing noise. Then the RPM is going to move up to 2000 on the inner scale. So then we come back, make sure we bring up that throttle nice and slow. Bring up the throttle to 3000 RPM. It'll be about where that little lever clicks. And then we can release the engine igniter. So now that we have the left engine started, the right engine process is going to begin. So we see the RPM is starting to increase. As we're approaching that 1000 RPM, we're going to press and hold the right engine igniter. And the unit starts firing. The unit starts making its way up to 2000 on the inner scale. You can start slowly bringing that throttle up for 3000 RPM. There's the click. 
we can release the engine igniter and now we have both engines started. So now you can have a look at the pilot's notes for the Messerschmitt 262. So now the engines have started, we'll get ready for taxiing. So in order to taxi, we're going to first close the canopy. And get the flaps set for 20 degrees, which will be our takeoff setting. And since we have full fuel here, the auxiliary tanks are going to be full, so the takeoff trim is going to be set between 2 and 3 degrees, so I'll use 2.5. And, and now when we want to taxi, we bring up the throttle nice and slow to about 6500 RPM and that point you're going to be able to start moving the airplane. Once we reach that 6500 RPM we start rolling. You can bring the RPM back to 6000 and still maintain a good taxi speed. Now when you're actually taxiing, in order to change directions you need to use the brakes. So if you want to go to the left, you can use the left brake right, use the right brake, and you can also use the nose brake if you need to. For takeoff on the 262, you're going to set your flaps to 20 degrees and then stabilize the trim as needed. Then you'll line up on the runway and hold the brakes and increase the throttle to 7000 RPM. Once the RPM is stable, you can release the brakes and begin increasing the throttle for full thrust. Using brakes to stay straight on the runway initially, and you'll rotate about 200 km per hour. So as we go to get lined up on the runway, I'm going to be using right brake to help bring the airplane around. But I don't want to make the turn too tight, also the nose wheel ends up kind of crooked after being lined up. So I'm going to ease out of the turn a little bit and roll forward to try and keep that nose wheel as straight as possible. I'm using the left brake to help stop that motion. I'm letting it roll forward and then applying all brakes and coming to a stop. So now we can verify we've got our flaps set at 20 degrees. Stabilize the trim, we've got a plus 2.5. I'm going to bring the throttle up to be about 7,000. I want them both to be approximately equal so we'll have even thrust when we start moving. We can release the brakes, start increasing the throttle up to full thrust. If you start rolling you're going to need to use some left and right brake to keep the airplane straight on the runway initially. Once you get past about 50 km per hour, you'll have enough rotor authority to keep yourself straight instead of using the brakes. Start accelerating down the runway. The plane's going to start feeling a little bit lighter. I'm at 200 km per hour. I'm going to rotate by bringing the nose wheel off the ground, holding your pitch attitude, and we'll lift off. Raise the landing gear with that positive rate of climb. Now you can't use the gear and flaps at the same time, so you need to wait completely for the gear to be up. So when you hear the clunk, verify we've got three red lights and we can raise the flaps all the way and then maintain your pitch attitude and we'll continue accelerating to over 300 km per hour. So now we're climbing and accelerating. We can lower the nose a bit the power back to a cruise setting of around 8,400 RPM. That'll be good for the cruise climb. So now we'll look at how to land the message mid 262. On downwind, you set your throttle to be 6,000 RPM and your airspeed will be below 350 km per hour. Then you can extend the landing gear and adjust the stabilizer trim with the nose up. 
By the end of downwind, the airspeed is going to be below 300 km per hour, and you can begin to smoothly increase the flaps to full. You do a base to final turn with an airspeed of 250 km per hour, and then on final, when you're about 30 meters or 100 feet off the ground, you're going to slowly reduce the thrust down to the minimum. Because if you bring it back too quickly, this could cause a flame out. Alright, so we're currently flying along at the pattern altitude. We're on the left downwind. And we've got our throttle set to 6000 RPM. So this is going to help us maintain that airspeed below 350 km per hour. That's the limitation on the landing gear, so we're below that, meaning we can now lower the landing gear. Now remember that we can't use the gear and flaps at the same time, so make sure you give yourself enough time to allow for that landing gear to fully extend by the end of downwind. And our airspeed is at 300 km per hour, we have three green lights, so we can start extending the flaps. Initially you can put them out to 20 degrees, and then begin your base to final turn. Then you'll slowly increase the flaps all the way to full during this turn while maintaining that airspeed of 250 km per hour. Now as you come around I'm going to maintain 6000 RPM because in a jet you don't get power immediately so this is going to allow me to get enough power quickly to do a go around if I needed to. As we continue flying towards the aiming point here it's going to be at the beginning of the runway so if you make a nice approach that aiming point should be just on the tip of the nose in this case. So I'm going to keep flying towards the runway, keeping it just on the tip of the nose. So as we get below about 30 meters, we start bringing the thrust back. And we begin rounding out the airplane, pitching up to keep the nose just above the horizon. Let's keep the nose wheel off the ground during the landing. And we touch down. And you can relax the back pressure, let the nose will come down. Then we start applying the braking. Now if you want to come to a stop, just keep applying full brakes all the way. But if you want to get off at the end, you can manage your braking so you have enough speed. So by the time you get to the end of the runway, you'll have enough speed to get off. And as you start getting closer to your exit point, you can start spooling the engines up increasing the thrust, and this will give you enough speed to get off the runway and continue taxiing. That completes this tutorial for the Messerschmitt 262. If you enjoyed it, be sure to share it with your friends and become a subscriber. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.